Part 1. You will hear a conversation between a university student and a librarian about using the city archives. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello. I was wondering if you could give me some information about using the archives? I'd be happy to. Are you a resident of the city? Actually, I live just outside the city, but I study at the university downtown. That's fine. All you need to do is show your university identification card and you can use the archives at no charge, as long as your ID card is current, of course. Yes, it's valid. So I don't have to pay anything? No, city residents pay an annual fee, but students can use the archives for free. Everyone else needs to get special permission from the director, but that doesn't apply to you, of course. Oh, good. I was also wondering about the schedule. I have classes every day, Monday through Friday, and I also have a part-time job, so I could really only use the archives on weekends. That's not a problem at all. We're open all weekend. Actually, the only day we're closed is Monday, so you can come any day, Tuesday through Sunday. Are you open in the evenings? Yes, we're open from 9.30 in the morning until 8.30 in the evening. That will fit my schedule well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Is there something else I can help you with? Yes. One thing I'll be needing to see for one of my class projects is old photographs. Do you have photographs of the city in the 19th century that I could look at? Yes, we store all the photographs in the basement. Those stairs over there will take you down to the photography collection. Just tell the librarian there what you're interested in, and he'll help you. Those would be 19th century photographs? Yes, the entire collection is there. Now, if you're interested in seeing documents from the 19th century, those are right here on the ground floor. I would like to see some of those documents. Does that collection include newspapers too? No, all the newspapers from the earliest ones in the 18th century up to the current time are on the second floor. Here, let me just give you this map of the archives and you'll be able to find whatever it is you need. Thank you. Oh, I see you have a whole room devoted to maps. Yes, on the third floor. That's great, because one thing I need to do is look at how the city has developed over time. I'm sure you'll find a lot of helpful information there. Of course, some of the maps are several centuries old so generally visitors are only allowed to see photographic reproductions of them. That shouldn't be a problem. What's this on the fourth floor, Ogden's Woolen Mill? As I'm sure you know, Ogden's Woolen Mill was the major entity responsible for the growth of this city in the 19th century. The Ogdeneers gave money for the archives to devote an entire floor to information about the history of the mill. Will I be able to find information about the Ogden family there? Photographs, personal papers, things like that? Probably the family photographs are stored downstairs in the photography collection. The personal papers would be on the fifth floor, where we keep all the personal papers of famous residents of our city. Thank you so much for your help. 
I'll be able to do a lot of my research here. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a conversation. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Rita speaking. What should I do for you? Oh, hi. I'd like to order some stationery. Could I know your name? Jackson Paris. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, Jackson? Sure. The number is 692411. 692411. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computer? No, the company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, Jackson? Envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? We'll have the plain white, please, but the ones with the little windows. OK, one box. A4, white. Just one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make those two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. As a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white then. Something else, Jackson? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, Light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets on the pack. Let me see. We're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists. So can you give us 10 packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. 10 packs of the light blue. Anything else that we can help you with? Let me think. What else do we need? I'm sure there was something else. Ends, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Oh, yes. We need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. That's all right. I'm not paying anyway. Right. Floppy disks. What about diaries next year? We've got them in stock already, and it's a good idea to order early. No, I think we're all right for diaries, but something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK. Can you include a wall calendar then, with the other stuff? Just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't. But would you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And when can you deliver this? 
should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30 a.m.? Because we have to go out at 12. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note in the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past 11. Thanks very much. Thanks. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a conversation between Sally and Ben. They are new college students. You now have some time to read questions 21 to 25. Now, listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, Ben. Sally. How are you? Fine. I wondered if I'd run into you. When did you get here? I only arrived last night, just in time. I prefer to travel on Sundays to miss the working rush. I suppose you arrived in plenty of time. Oh, I've been here for four days now. So it must have been Thursday that I arrived. I like to have a good chance to look around and settle in. I should have come earlier too. I'm hoping to get a part-time job. Well, you've no time today, I suppose. Do you still plan to be an architect? Yes. It's what I've always wanted to do. And you were planning to do economics, weren't you? Yes, I was. But now I've decided on psychology instead. How many textbooks do you have to get? I've been given this long list, and I'm sure they'll cost a fortune. See? That looks a lot. It's longer than my list. Well, it's 14, all told. So I might use library copies instead of buying some of them. What about you? I'll probably buy the whole lot of mine because I only have five on my list. Although I'm sure there are many more I'll have to read. Luckily, we don't have to read them all straight away. Have you got your class timetable yet? It came with the book list. When do your lectures start? Tuesday. That's tomorrow. How about yours? Oh, I've got an extra day. The day after yours start. Now you have some time to read questions 26 to 30. As the conversation continues, they are talking about their new college life. Listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. It's nothing like school, is it? Not so far, and the lectures will certainly be different. Do you have any special approach for keeping up with lectures and the amount we have to read? Well, I usually try to read every word in a book in case I miss something important. So I suppose I'll try to write down every word of the lecture if I can. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'd get cramp in my fingers and I wouldn't really hear what was being said. I usually skim a book when I read and underline key parts, so I guess I'll try to make notes on the main points of the lecture. Have you thought of using a cassette recorder? You mean to record the lecture? Yep. Then you could make really good notes. Is it allowed? I think so. It must be. Plenty of people seem to do it. It has to be better than trying to write every word as you listen. Anyway, what's your first lecture about? 
Oh, it's on the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution sounds boring to me. Not really. It made a big difference to everything, including architecture. Eventually. So, what's your first lecture about? It's about what separates humans from other animals. Okay. Look, I was on my way to the library to check out some of these books on my list. I have a tutorial paper to give in a couple of weeks. Oh, what's the topic? Well, I think our lecturer must have trouble thinking up topics. The topic is why study architecture. I don't know. It could give you a chance to set out what you want to do. I guess so. Have you been given any tutorials to do yet? Yes, mine is called Needs for Sleep. Sounds almost as interesting as mine. The end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk on Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning and welcome to this talk on Canada. Many people think of Canada as a land of ice and snow. They think of it as a young country with few inhabitants, a country of English-speaking white people. While some of this is true, it is also an inaccurate description of the country we call Canada. Canada lies in the northern half of the continent of North America. The most northern parts of Canada are sometimes called the land of the midnight sun, because at certain times of the year the sun never sets and is still shining faintly at midnight. This northern part of Canada is cold and mostly snow-covered all year round. Most of the people who live in this northern part of Canada are called Inuit or Dene. They were once called Eskimos. They are the original people of this land and are part of what are called the First Nation. As we move to the more southern parts of Canada, the land changes and so does the people. Moving from east to west in southern Canada, we travel from the Atlantic provinces of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. These small provinces with small populations border on the Atlantic Ocean. The land in these provinces is not very fertile, so fishing, forestry, and mining are the main industries. Although in some small areas, agriculture is also important. If we travel west from the Atlantic provinces, we come to Central Canada, composed of the large provinces of Quebec and Ontario. Both provinces are rich in natural resources, have fertile land, and are the centers of industry for Canada's largest cities. Toronto and Montreal are found in these provinces. The province of Quebec is the center of French language and culture in Canada. In fact, Montreal is the second largest French-speaking city in the world after Paris. Finally, in the far west of Canada. We come to the province of British Columbia. This province is separated from the prairies by the Rocky Mountains and is bounded on the west by the Pacific Ocean. British Columbia is often called simply the West Coast. British Columbia is an attractive place for tourists because of its mild climate, spectacular mountains, sea coast, and beautiful forests.
agriculture, forestry, shipping and fishing are major industries in British Columbia. The people of this land of Canada are as varied as its landscape. The original settlers, those we call the people of the First Nations, came from Asia by crossing the Bering Strait from Siberia to Alaska. In their new environment, they developed many new languages and cultures. In the 16th century, the first Europeans arrived in eastern Canada. They came from Britain and France. By making treaties with the original inhabitants, they gradually established colonies in eastern and central Canada. After a war with France, Britain took over the French colonies in Quebec and eastern Canada. By the end of the 18th century, all of Canada was under British rule. From this time until the present century, most of the immigrants to Canada were British, Scottish and Irish. In this century, however, Canada has had an influence of settlers from all over the world. There are now hundreds of thousands of people from Asia, Africa and South America who now call Canada their home. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.